Yes. I see. See how I have to go over that horn with my hand to try to, you know, and it's just, it's just ridiculous. I can't, it's so fun. So explain hard. once again what you wish to do well, to the horn? No, you just got to remove the horn. And There's, then what do you do? Do you polish it all down? Listen, and... let me give everyone a real quick heads up on okay. what the design of this guitar is. Uh, this is a Strat style body. It's a modified Strat, modern modified Strat style, but Strat style, meaning it has... It looks like this on the bottom, and it's got these two horns. And if you just complete this circle around the top, you'll notice it looks exactly like an acoustic guitar. It just If you just complete that circle, right, it's an acoustic guitar. What Leo Fender did was he said, okay, we're going to make the body. Instead of hollow body, it's going to be solid body. So it really doesn't matter. We don't need to do this. In fact, we didn't. they didn't even need to do that. As Gibson <laughs> demonstrated conclusively, by doing the flying V. But anyway, they said, well let's, well, let's make it look like a regular guitar, but let's scoop out these things here so that the player has greater access to the upper registers. Fantastic, it's a great idea. These And then these became known as horns. Uh, <laughs> Metal! Anyway. So, <laughs> so um, the thing is, though, there's just absolutely no reason for these things to exist except for that Leo Fender wanted to maintain the outline of a, a typical acoustic guitar that was fil familiar to people and provide whatever little benefit he thought he provided by scooping these horns out. That's fantastic. It set us all in the right direction. <laughs> and the point is, though, you know, he just didn't go far enough uh, for the modern lead player or, you know, or some, someone like myself that has a more classical hand position where I keep my my wrist out and you can see how I'm just like trying to go over this thing. It's just impossible. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I say disgusting because it's frustrating. <laughs> That's how frustrating it is. Anyway, but so there's no reason for this to exist here except it's just a familiar form. It's just the Strat style that we've all come accustomed to. Too, but there's no reason for it. You could take both of these off and it wouldn't do anything to this guitar. So, except improve its functionality as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, uh, Michael, do you plan on taking both horns off? No, I don't care about the upper horn. The part, What I care about is I care about neck through body design with no heel, which this has, and then I care about getting this horn out of my way. You so mean the I other horn, don't you? maintain don't, my you? technique and play the main thing. Oh, this okay. Thing, yeah, because otherwise this thing's amazing. Oh, you know the thing I don't like? See yeah. how flat this ridge here and how edgy this ridge is? Yes. Here? That sucks. I got like a big line on the inside of my arm from dealing with this flat, edgy thing. Do just, you think that most I'm people just, have these problems, or is it because of you uh, and your size? Me and my size, especially since I'm you're, older and you're I have six a foot bit five of a height and six five two eighty five. So I got a little bit of a tummy. And the problem is it kind of sticks the guitar out a little bit, and then it, my my arm comes down at an increased angle. So I, what I want to do is, like, you see these kind of swales that they provide? Yes. Well, <laughs> that needs to be here. So what I would do is I'd take, uh, I'd take a bandsaw or um, a jigsaw and or whatever I had, and I'd just... Zank this thing off right here, mm -hmm. get it out of my way, and then I take a, a belt sander and I just contour this surface right here. Okay. And it would be lovely and wonderful and perfect. For you? Yes. Okay. And since it's my guitar and I like it, I think I'm going to do that. And again, this is your eight string, yep. what? Schecter. Schecter? Okay. Yep, eight string Schecter. Yeah, it's kind of dark, but we can see. With a Floyd Rose. That I don't have the Floyd Rosie bit in. Okay. But the thing is, is that that's kind of an honor for a guitar. I'm, you know, projecting <laughs> a whole. You uh, mean to be cut up is an honor? Me. Yes. Exactly. No, okay. that's disgusting. Well, you do not plan way. on reselling this, do? That's the thing is that once, if you consider a guitar an integral part of your uh, repertoire or of collection, instruments, your collection, what do you want to say? Uh, and you feel the need to do something like this, then you have to accept the consequences. And then it will not have the resale value. Okay. 
it'll still be worth half of what it's supposed to worth. Oh, be right. worth. Yeah, just because it is what it is, and you can't get this anywhere. So, I mean, you know, it's it was a thousand dollar guitar. You pack the horn off. Uh, you honestly, with an eight string guitar like this, with a Floyd Rose, you still might be able to get half that. Five hundred or three hundred. Yeah, maybe? full full market value. Honestly, with a horn whacked off and the modifications and shit, I mean, you're probably two three hundred bucks. Yeah, that will change you're the value. Just shit can the resale value. Yeah. yeah. But. Uh, you know, you have to take what the market gives you, and right now the market's way behind the curve on what I want. Because okay. I, because I want this in a seven in a flying V, like it's completely a completely heelless, uh, all the way to the twenty fourth fret flying V. And after listening to Marshall Harrison, I think a twenty fifth fret is probably important. Can you turn this into one of those? No. Okay. But I'm just saying. Uh, you know, twenty whatever twenty four frets fine, but something like this in a super streamlined, super high performance flying V, and there ain't nothing. Mm. And you know what? After having played an eight string for a while and finding it so accommodating and loving the range so much, God, I don't know. I'm almost thinking of a nine string at this point. Mm. I mean, it would be fun to experiment with it, especially since it exists. Because the same company makes that same nine string, and I know this rocks. I know this is a great playing guitar. How much would the nine string run about? Oh, it's about uh, twelve, thirteen, maybe fifteen. Okay. About fifteen hundred. So, uh, something like that. Is it a Schlechter you're thinking of? Schlechter, right? Schlechter. No, but no, I'm not worried about that. But I'm just saying, it's like I'm definitely sold on these extended range instruments, and the the range you get is just incredible, and it's fun. It's addictive, really, you know. It's just like, once you get that thunderous bottom end, it's like that piano bottom end, you know. So. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really cool. But I have to be able to play it, you know. And if I could get my own Mike Foss signature model Schecter, same thing in a Flying V, you know, 8 string, 9 string, 10 string, in a Flying V, you know. That's, that's your dream, huh? For. Yeah, well, I get gets this crap out of my way. I mean... Yes, Leo Fender's uh, limited innovation and limitations um, out of my way, you know. Could you sometimes share with us your uh, own uh, guitar that you constructed or oh, built? Oh, yeah, the Wave Flight. Sure, sure. Yeah, we could do another Wave Flight video. I should get that thing up and running a little bit Do you have it here with you? I do. It's in the back room there. Does it have all the strings? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know you've broken a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, Mike, it was a good interview. I think we'll end it now. Cool. It'll be a fun YouTube thing for uh, my, my viewership. Okay. Bye.